Scott Schiller from Team G503 and Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts. Been doing a series of three videos driving the early prototype Jeeps. We drove the Willis MA, we drove the Ford GP four-wheel steer, and in this video we'll be driving the BRC40, which is the third generation of the prototypes from Bantam. Uh, the predecessors to that would have been the BRC60 before, and then the earliest model would be the number one, they call it the number one, or the Pilot, or the GPV, or the MK1, and that was the first one that Bantam designed for the reconnaissance vehicle or the Jeep, so we will give credit to them. Uh, I want to dive right in here. There's a lot to see on this Jeep. It's a fantastic vehicle. The most notable characteristic of this Jeep, particularly driving it is, is the way that your waistline seems to be above where the cowl and the dashboard, which is kind of a unique feeling when you're driving it. Let's take a look. We are looking at a 1941 BRC40 at the actual Joe's Motor Pool. This is the most definitive area of this vehicle to me is this front end. Where you've got your headlights recessed into the fenders as they are and these guards. The frame, super lightweight frame, um, really almost a unibody. Kind of almost square channel. Yep. You've got your hood stops on the top. And the bonnet on this or the hood is extremely different than either the MA or the MB. See the low profile here? Show you some of the accessories on the side of the fender. You've got the windshield hold downs, which are really unique. And the hood or bonnet catches. They've been loose here. The windshield is extremely different as there's a lot of square tubing on it in the top here. You'll see how square that is across the top. Windshield is low. And when you sit in this, you feel like your waistline is right at where the dash would be when you fold that windshield down. You can see the windshield catches here. You've got your stops, your safety strap coming into the dash. This is a really beautiful instrument cluster. I find this really impressive. They did a nice job on this. You've got all your different gauges inside one gauge as a cluster. We've got our data tags here. Passenger seat and driver's seat are really comfortable. You've got a lot of leg room in here. Take a look over here by the driver's side. That would be the lever that operates the emergency brake. And notice the pedals, uh, the round, and then you've got your transfer case shifting levers and your transmission shifter lever. But look down here and see this accelerator pedal is really round. It's like a little peg that sticks up from the floor. And actually that's really nice. I, during when I was driving this, I had my paratrooper boots on, which the toes and big toes, some of the other Jeeps were kind of difficult. This made it really easy to get in and out of. Again, lots of leg room. To fill the fuel tank, you lift up the seat and you can see the sending unit there and there's your fill opening right there with the cap. Seat frames are made of what looks to be flat stock. Behind the seats is some very interesting foot rests. We don't have a rear seat in this one, but there are brackets that you can see on the side for the seats. The toolboxes are really unique because they're so small, but you have them on both the driver's side and the passenger side. And while I'm right here, let me show you the brackets for holding the top bow. Very interesting and different and unique. There's two, you'd unscrew that and you could take your top bow off. And then you'd have one up front here. And basically you lay the single top bow down. You got the grab handles on the sides as well as at the front. You'll see the footman loop there. We've got some side curtains on this as well. Look at the lights from the rear side. There's your single top bow. The bumperettes are really unique and kind of fancy by design actually, in my opinion. They look like stop signs that are riveted through the center. And then that's the way they're formed at the top. Again, very light frame. Take a look at the reflectors and the rear lights. 
grab handles on the corners again. Again, the solid rims. Take a look at the drive shafts. And then the rear view mirror is very unique in itself as well. It just kind of stands out of the side. This vehicle performs extremely well on the highway. Very smooth. The uh, acceleration is very good. Lift up the hood and look at the engine compartment. Notice the air filter. And then we've got the Continental engine. The note the distributor that comes right through the center almost of the head. The oil filter. The voltage regulator and where the battery is located. Very unique radiator and it sets back from the front grill a good eight inches or so. No shroud that's there that I see now, but it is formed at the top here. So perhaps that aids in cooling. See the braces on the sidewall. From the driver's side, you can see what would be a shroud to aid in the cooling. There's your oil dipstick. Cap with the chain, that's kind of unique. Handles, drives, accelerates fantastically well. And this was the lightest of all the prototype Jeeps at 2,100 pounds. This Bantam is about as smooth as it gets. This thing rides like glass. Quiet, smooth, and nice. The roads are a little rough here, but I'm impressed with how well this vehicle operates. Very fortunate to be able to get the drive over these. They're extremely rare. Not many of them left at work, and this one is almost what I would call pristine. What'd you say? Mad American. <laughs> a great extended thank you to the guys at Joe's Motor Pool, especially Dean Harvey, for allowing me to drive and, and view and film these vehicles so we could all see them. Fantastic experience. I hope you enjoyed the, the film. Driving this one, I didn't drive this one as much as I drove the MA or the 4GP. Uh, the last part of the trip back to England when we came back from France, Normandy, France there, uh, I got to jump in this one, trade it out with Nigel Ward. Drove around some curvy back roads going through the moors, they called them. Yeah, it was a pretty neat experience. This is that Bantam really gets up to speed fast and it handles really well. Very impressive vehicle. If you'd like to follow along what we're doing with the 1943 Willis MB build, we're getting along with that. I'll get back into that next. Been on vacation in Normandy and saw that for the 75th anniversary D-Day. Going to dive back in with some of the videos on the build after this. I hope you enjoyed this series of three videos with the early prototype Jeeps. It's absolutely once a lifetime thing to do. Amazing, and I'm happy to have been a part of it. Thanks again. If you'd like to subscribe to us, you can do so by clicking the button down there, Team G503, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications when we get new videos. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep us safe and happy Jeeping.